Welcome to the Signature Sip Podcast, a real estate podcast with myself, John Steingraber, and my beautiful wife, Michelle Pice. Cheers to the beginning of Signature Sip. I feel like now we're back and we have a lot to give. We have a lot to offer. Till this day, by the way, I have to say, the excitement happens the second I land the deal, not when I get paid. It's the art of the deal, it's landing that up. Right, it's the chase. Not only are we going to be giving a lot of wisdom and knowledge and experiences and stories, but we're going to bring on guests. I bartended, babe. So something that you and I have in common, even though... Babe, you bartended for how long? Three months. A day or two? I... Okay, it's a podcast. <laughs> so you were like eating a tosta mista in Emily's Bakery. Um, I think I was having a pastel de nata. Okay, pastel de nata. <laughs> and a galon. And if you're a realtor, if you're an investor, you're going to want to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining. We have a very special guest today, one of our own, Anna Caetano. Did I say that right? Yeah. Caetano. She is a signature agent, and um, she's here to talk to us about how to build a six-figure real estate business as a full-time teacher. Are you excited? I am. We're excited to have you. We have so many questions for you. I mean, I think... um, our last guest that we had here was Melissa Gonzalez. She was a teacher. She was full time, um, and you know she's she's one of our top agents in the in the company. And I just think it's incredible, just you know, being able to be a teacher and then all of a sudden you know transition to real estate. I do think real estate agents. Um, I think teachers make great real estate agents, and yeah. I don't know what it is. I mean, I we have a lot of teachers. So many yeah. teachers that just transition, and they're doing it full time or part time. But they're doing so well. So what is it about it? Is it your patience? Is it your organizations? Like, tell us, why teachers? Like, why, why do teachers make such great real estate agents? I mean, yeah. I want to hear from you. No, absolutely. So I think there's a couple of things. Uh, one of the things is we have to be good priority managers. So when we have a classroom filled with kids, we have to see what we're going to do first, what's going to happen second. And we have to kind of time block as we go. And what people don't see in real estate is we're getting pulled left and right, and we have to wear many hats. So I feel like that's a correlation between being a teacher and being a full-time agent or part-time agent. We just know how to manage our time really well, and we know how to time block to make sure everything happens accordingly and that everyone's taken care of. Yeah, managing emotions is probably a big part of it, right? Yes, and also multitasking. I mean, if we're doing three, four transactions at a time, kind of like having a classroom filled with 30 kids at one time. So, uh, (laughs) What grade do you teach? So I'm a health and phys ed teacher, and so we teach K through 8. So I have little ones all the way up to 8th grade. Wow. Wow. Who's tougher, the kids or the clients? (laughs) That's a tough question. Or the parents Uh, of the kids. (laughs) Parents of the kids, I'm going to go with that. But um, I don't know, it's it's very similar in many ways. If I had to choose, I'd say, you know, dealing with the parents um, of the kids. It's difficult. It gets difficult. So why did you get your real estate license to begin with? You were a teacher, you went to school to be a teacher. Yeah, um, so that's a loaded question because I put a lot of thought into um, into this question because I get asked many times, like, why'd you go into real estate all of a sudden? And so I thought about it, and it really goes back to when I was a kid. I was about 10 years old, and my parents happened to live next to a real estate agent. And my parents lived on the double lot, and that realtor at the time convinced them to kind of build an extension on their home and turn it into, like, a... Um, half like side by side duplex and so I would come home from school I was about 10 years old and I would stand at the window mesmerized watching these guys like build this house and anytime my dad had to do a Home Depot run I was there I needed to be there I just loved it so much but I never put a lot of thought into that growing up into what I wanted to be so when it came time I was like well I'm just gonna go into teaching I get my summers off so that's what we're gonna do um and I liked to play sports I love it's not like I want to help kids it's I like I get summers I off benefits. I get summers off I get benefits no but <laughs> I, I really liked being active and being physically active so I decided to go into being a physical education teacher yeah. so and, yeah. we ended up there but as I grew up you know I made that decision I had to go to college and I picked up a part-time job at a real estate um office as a oh, wow. secretary oh, oh yeah no way yeah, so I was there for, for some time. I think similar, similar to you, right? Story. Yeah, so that's what I did. What, what agency and how old were you? Uh, I forget how old. I was probably like 19. Mm-hmm. Um, probably a little younger than that. I had um, Remax Select right next to our Westfield office, ah, like down the street. Okay. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. So you were so a secretary there. I was just part time secretary, like okay. in the afternoons I'd be there. Okay. Taking, I was kind of like an phones. ISA, taking phones, making calls. Okay. But you didn't have your license at that. I point. didn't have my license. Right. So you know, five years go by. I'm ready to graduate college, and I have to tell my broker at the time, and you know, hey, I'm putting my two weeks in. I'm graduating. I'm going off into my career. And he looks at me, he's like, are you sure that's what you want to do? I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, Yeah, I did five years of college. I can't (laughs) disappoint my parents now. So he said, well, there's this other agent who's coming to our brokerage, and he's a health and phys ed teacher, and he just quit to come join us. He's like, I think you're going to regret this decision, and you're going to come full circle one day. So, you know, like I said, can't disappoint my parents, just graduated. But I always kept that in the back of my mind. And so I became a health and physics teacher, and COVID hit. And what town is that in? I'm in Elizabeth. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's one of, I think, second or third biggest district mm-hmm. in New Jersey. So I went, and it, COVID hit. You know, now there's, schools are shut down. There's nothing to do, and I'm getting worried because I'm like, what's going to happen? Is there going to be a financial crisis? Are you going to get rid of certain teachers? And I thought to myself, the first, first teachers to go are going to be the specialists. They don't need art teachers. They don't need the phys ed teachers. They're going to give us the boot. What am I going to do? I need another source of income. I was thinking about that, and also I was, I was bored. I'm not a person to sit around and watch TV or just sit there and do nothing for long periods of time. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, maybe I should read a book. Like, <laughs> I haven't read a book in years. Maybe I should read a book. And so this book came to mind that um, when I was 12 years old, I tried to read it. Someone had gifted it to my dad. He had started his own business. What was it called? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm. And so book. I tried to read it when I was 12, but it was just a little too advanced for me at 12 years old. So it came to mind during COVID, and I went digging for it. I knew it was in the house somewhere, found it, and I read it. So right there, my mind just started, you know, wow. Every, like, there's so much out there we can do with real estate. And after reading or during reading that book, I opened up Instagram and a friend of mine who I kind of grew up with posted, he had just bought his like third uh, multifamily. Now this kid's my age, we're the same. I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? So I reached out to him and he was an open book. He literally spit out all the knowledge he could possibly spit out. And I would just, I knew at that moment that I wanted to get my real estate license. So I remember calling Eliani and I texted him, I said, hey, what school did you go to for real estate? How, how did you know Eliani? So my mom was actually her kid's babysitters for a oh. long time, and then I ended up babysitting her youngest child for, oh, okay. for a little bit. Ah, yeah, that's so. Okay, okay. Yeah, we had known each other for a couple of years before she even got into real estate. Mm-hmm. So I texted her, and she's like, forget the school I went to. I got a better <laughs> one for you. And so she put me on to Signature Realty Academy. And yeah, now, now and we're George here. was your instructor. George Bellino, yeah. Wait, so how long have you been with us? Two and a half years now. And, uh, and you got your license through us. Correct. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, she probably started in one of the first That's classes. That's what I was just going to say. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. early on in one of the very first classes with George. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was a great experience, and it still is, and we're here today. So two and a half years in, and um, is it safe to say that you probably made more money selling real estate than you... Yes currently yes. do at your Absolutely. full-time job. I mean, yeah. She's still a full-time teacher. That's what I'm saying, as, so, as a so, full-time so teacher. So talk about that. Like, you know, obviously you, you said, okay, this was the tipping point for me. COVID, insecurity, didn't know what was going to happen. So I decided, let me get my real estate license. You obviously did the class, passed the school test, passed the state test, joined Signature. What was it that made you say, okay, real estate is for me? Because some people get their license, they start, and then they're like, you know, I don't know. You know, they stumble. It's hard. It's 100% commission. What was it that was like, all right, sing, you know, real estate is the deal for me. Like, I'm going to yeah, do Yeah, I mean, well, I embraced it, and just I feel like joining the, joining the right brokerage had a lot to do with it, mm-hmm. and just seeing the trainings um, that Signature had and just the culture we had at Signature – kind of opened my mind to like, I can do this, you know, anybody could do this. And I embraced it and I kind of took it full force and it, it just kind of took off with, I was putting in a lot of work after, you know, people ask me, how do you do it while you're a full-time teacher? You know, during work, during my lunch break, I was doing real estate. Right after work, I was doing real estate. All the way until 9.30, 10 p.m., I was doing real estate, whether it was 
making phone calls, doing showings, filling out, you know, filling envelopes with letters. I was always doing something, open houses on the weekends. And um, that's what really got me to where I am today. But, you know, I, I fully, I was open-minded. You got to have the mindset too. You can't do one thing once and then say, well, it didn't work. And I feel like that's where a lot of people stumble, like you said. They just kind of say it's not for me. But once you see it work, you know, I got my first list- listing from one of my very first letters I sent out. Mm-hmm. And once I got where that first it? listing, where in Summit, it? right next to our office, mm-hmm. in Summit. Yeah, so once so I got you, that first... You wrote a letter, a uh, personal letter? So I didn't write it. I actually used one of the ones that we have. Kind mm-hmm. of Templates, yeah. One of our templates. Mm-hmm. Um, today, I do write some of them myself, like mm-hmm. handwritten. But at the time, it was just, I was starting. I didn't really know where to go. Right. Um, so I used one of our templates, and it worked. And then um, another great thing about being at the right brokerage is that I, I was able to call on one of our agents. I partnered up with Eliani, and you know she guided me through what a full transaction on the listing side was like. Um, so yeah, that's really how that's awesome. everything has came together to today. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And so are you planning on, you know, like, Staying at your teacher job for a long time. What's the goal there? Or do you if not? If want I had to talk a dollar for um, every no, time I don't know if you can talk me. about that because you're obviously on video. I can. Um, yeah, I, I, in the next few years, if not within the next year, I do see myself going full time. Transitioning. Um, Just pull the band. Pull the band aid. I know Michelle said. Pull the band aid off. Says that. I know. <laughs> so she's always like, jump, jump, <laughs> Just do, do it, it. <laughs> do it, do it. Well, uh, hopefully we don't have another like world shut down and um yeah timing is really not my thing so because yeah. melissa's like well i remember last time you told me you you, she, you melissa did the, the same word. thing and she goes yeah well, i just completely quit and then covid happened i'm like yeah but look at you look where you are now yeah. <laughs> um yeah just do it i just you know go on well yeah that's but you've been doing, well it depends but you've been I, doing it for two and a half but how years, many so years have like you been a teacher five Okay, so you don't get tenure. I don't have tenure. Right. Don't get my pension, but I've done the math. You need a another five times. years. I need at another least. five years, but I think that's just way too long. And for do me. you live that's at home lot, still? Yeah. No. So through real estate, this is one of the big selling points for me to keep going. Is I was able to buy my first investment property and kind of house hack with it. Right. So you so live in one unit and rent out. I live the rest? in one unit and I run um, an Airbnb on the other other oh, unit. That's great. Um, that's great. So real what estate opened that, that door, in? also in Elizabeth. Oh, nice. Um, real estate opened that door for me, so I feel like it's been opening more and more doors. So yeah, why wouldn't I keep, keep going? Doing it, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure your parents are they? How are they now? Like, because I know you said you did this because you didn't want to disappoint them, but now that you're getting you're getting into yeah. real estate, you own your own first investment property. You're mm-hmm. obviously doing a lot better now uh, in sales than you are at making as a teacher. Are they excited for you? They like, are. They're super excited. My dad always told me, um, you know, I was afraid to disappoint them, but had I came to them at that point, my dad would have probably just said, fine, go ahead, do it. My mom would have probably been like, no, we just went to college. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're not doing that. Like, well, they're Portuguese. Portuguese so they're, my mom would not be happy, but today she's, you know, very chill. She's okay with me going full time. Um, but when I take the, I, I do take a lot of days off from teaching and s- still today she's like, you're taking another day well, off. you're allowed to. But I'm allowed to. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, it's Just fine. Tell her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we were having dinner last night. And she's like, you want to take some uh, dinner for lunch? And I was like, I'm not going to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so what do you think is a correlation between being a teacher and a real estate agent? Yeah. So going back to the skills, the basic skills that we have being teachers, um, is the same skills that we, the basic skills we need as realtors. That, you know, managing people, transactions, time blocking, doing really well with those things. If you have those skills now, and I feel like in real estate, you're gonna be successful. And as a teacher, you have to be a master at that. If you're not, your class is gonna be chaos. Nothing's ever gonna get done. You'll have, Mm -hmm. especially in the gym, I mean, we don't right. have a de- we don't have desks in the right. gym. The kids it's aren't different. sitting. It's chaos. I like you have to, to control the crowd. Yeah, I like to call it organized chaos. You know, I know what's going on. The kids are doing something in that corner, on that side of the gym, this side of the gym, but I'm controlling the environment. Kind of like in real estate, we control the transaction. We kind of control everything. So I think those are just skills that teachers build up over the years as teachers really transition well into, you know, real estate. It just correlates and that's why we see so many teachers leaving the teaching 
industry and coming into real estate yeah, and doing well, that, you know. And they do really, really well. Yeah. There's definitely some qualities for sure um, that teachers have that real estate agents also possess. So no, absolutely. Um, tell us. How's the bureaucracy in the school system? Like, does that affect you as a teacher? Like, is that one of the reasons that you think some... Because t- every, every person that I know that's a teacher, they're always, they're always like, like I, I love being a teacher. I love the kids. But, but there's always the but. The and the but is... is it's the system. Yeah. And um, I was just talking about it with, with Nino a little bit ago. Um, the way they have the school system set up, just it doesn't work and then they expect us to be efficient but the system is not set up for us to be efficient you know so we get burnt out very easily and teachers start to kind of put their hands up and give up a little bit and then that's where you know that bureaucracy comes into place um they want us to do certain things that just are impossible i can't teach a kindergarten class one lesson and then have two minutes to transition into an eighth grade lesson and clean up the entire gym and reset up for an eighth grade class without the kids going wild because now my, my focus and attention is not on the kids. It's on cleaning and getting the gym prepped for the next period, but we only have two minutes in between. It just doesn't make sense. And then if a kid just happens to get into a fight or get hurt in those two minutes, it's our fault, you know? So little things like that pile up, which teachers get burnt out and fed up with. Um, Luckily, I'm in the gym, so I don't have the tons of paperwork that classroom teachers have to deal with. So if you add that to the mix, I can only imagine how burnt out they are. I'm lucky. I get to be, when the, when the weather's nice, I get to be out on the playground. The kids are playing. So I do have it a little bit easier than the regular classroom teacher. But definitely the stress that kind of falls on top of the teacher. And then they have to take all this work home because we don't have that time to grade the paperwork or, or do all that. Um, so I think that's where, you know, it kind of happens that teachers get tired and then they look for another source of income. Signatureacademy.com. Uh, trust me, Signature it goes around. Signature I think Realty everyone Academy. in my, in my building knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's just interesting because you think about like the macro of, you know, all the teachers that I talk to say the same thing and it yeah. makes you wonder, right? We have a three-year-old daughter yeah. and one of the most important things in our life is our daughter, of course. right? And then what's the most, one of the most important education. things for our daughter? It's education. the education, right? And where we're going to put her and what town and we are we going private? Are we not going private? All the time. And, you know, it makes you really think, yeah. right? Because it's like if we're losing good people, good teachers to real estate, right? It's happening. Um, and it and it's a good point. and and everybody that I've talked to, Sagro, everybody, right? It's I love the kids. Yeah, I love it's the not kids. The kids. I love the, the the kids in the teaching part, but it's this the politics, the bureaucracy. Yeah, I mean, is. you know, they're making me do this, they're making me do that, and it's almost a little thankless in the yeah. sense that they some some administrations in the school system don't have their back, don't have the teachers' backs, right? Yeah. So I left another building to switch to the building I currently work at because I felt like the admin did not have my back whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, And to be honest, had I not moved, I would have been really fed up and I would have probably left teaching already. Um, I currently work in a building where I do have a supportive admin for the most part, so it hasn't forced me to kind of like, I need to make this jump right now. But um, what you're saying is very accurate. No. Can you tell us, um, as an agent, newer agent, um, and that's also um, juggling both careers, how do you get your leads? Like, what do you do? You know, how do you get listings? How do you get buyers? Obviously, we know that you know you're also on Zillow and you're getting opportunities from Signature, but on your own, it's your own business. So, how are you out there? What are you doing? Are you door knocking? Yeah, so there's a couple things. Um, I have done door knocking in the past. It's not my favorite thing to do. I still do it if I have an open house coming up. I'll go around the neighborhood, let them know, you know, hey, we may have some extra traffic on your street because we're doing an open house. So I do mm-hmm. do it before, right before an open house. She's such a good student. She's <laughs> a good teacher, but she's a good student. Mm-hmm. Uh, Got to balance. I like um, that. So, but no, where I get most of my leads from, a lot of it has been from just putting myself out there, especially on social media and going to networking events. Really? And Like for Instagram? Yeah, Instagram. Just, you know, a lot of people are under the impression that just because someone is related to, to you, they're going to use you as their agent. But if you're not out there showing them what you're doing, right. 
they might not. You know, I just had a, a lead. Um, I actually sold their house and helped them buy another house. Her brother-in-law is a real estate agent. And wow. they used me instead. And, and I, I asked, I said, why me? She's like, well, your social media just looks like you're doing so much. You're always at events. You're always doing this, X, Y, Z. And he's at home sitting on the couch. <laughs> so, like, I'm not going to let him sell my house. So, um, no, but that's, that, that's, that's a very valid point. And I love that you said that because I feel like a lot of real estate agents um, have the opposite mentality. They're like, oh, everybody knows a realtor, so like, it's hard sometimes to get business. And the reality of it is, is who do you want to sell your highest value asset? Somebody that is active and motivated and has a good work ethic? Because the truth is, if you look at real estate agents, it's a 90-10 business. 10% of the agents sell 90% of the homes. And then the other 90% don't do much. They might sell one home a year. Yeah. Right? And you also, from your social media, didn't you get like a five or six million dollar listing opportunity? Yeah. So it comes also back to being at the right brokerage. Signature allows us to kind of share each other's listings. Mm -hmm. And so I shared one of our agent's listings and someone reached out to me and he said, you know, I'm not interested in that home, but I'm, I have a home similar to that one that, that I'm building. And um, I would like to have an, an agent come out here and just see what it, it's going to be worth. You know, what's the ARV? Um, so, you know, I partnered up with one of our agents, Chad, and we went and, um, we're still working on it. Um, but hopefully we get that listing down the line. It was social media. And how did he find you? Was it the right hashtags? Is that? Uh, hashtag so I do, I do boost some of the ads. Ah, so I believe great. it was from boosting an that's ad. Great. Um, and now he follows me. So that's he sees great. a lot more of my work. Um, but besides social media, cold calling and following up, um, some people, you know, cold call for an hour or two, you know, once a month, twice a month, and they don't see a result, and they give up, and they say, oh, it's not for me. But it's not really, I mean, the goal is to set that appointment on that call, but if you don't, you, need, you really need to follow up. You need to have a CRM or something where you're going to remember that you have to call, you know, X lady, some guy, whoever, and let them know, you know, hey, we spoke a couple months ago, just checking up, and let the conversation flow. But the follow up, um, cold calling, has been another big one for me. And then letters, um, I got my first li listing from, from letters. letters. And yeah. you just like blanket the neighborhood or? So in the beginning, I was still learning, so I was just blanking the neighborhood. Now I kind of zero in and kind of focus more on like one town or a pocket of a town. Because um, when, I, when I tell other agents this sometimes, well, the response is, well, I don't have money to do all these letters. I'm like, that's fine, just start small, focus on one thing, one, one location. And then you'll grow from there eventually. So it's been it's really been a couple of things, cold calling letters right. and sphere of influence and just putting myself out there. So last year you did 14 transactions? Correct. That's great. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize like, OK, I can have a full time job, especially a job like a teacher job. Right. Because it, you're getting off at what, three o'clock, two thirty. Yep. Right. And then you have weekends off. So if somebody works 80 hours a week at a job, that's different than working as a teacher and then having this, right? But if you're, I think that's a, a big reason why the teacher schedule works because after three o'clock, that's when people want to see homes, right? On the weekends, that's when people want to see homes. Exactly. Right, that's when you're doing listings. And then you get, you know, all the major holidays off, mm -hmm. right? That's when people want to see homes. Yeah, right? we, we have a lot of time in our, on our hands. Um, right. It just. So what would you say to teachers out there that like, screw off on their summers and they don't do anything i tell them they got to get their head in the game they have they just have to s sit down and focus and just do it i mean you have nothing to lose i mean just the signature academy is only what 100 100 Nin bucks yeah you have nothing to bucks. lose or 99 bucks you have nothing plus to the lose. book is like 60 bucks yeah and i mean you can do it part-time Right. Like I have, and well, I feel like everybody knows somebody that's gonna wants to buy or sell a house. Like, you, and it doesn't exactly. even have to One just person. be real estate, though. Like, if you're a teacher, right? Like, I'm a big believer that you can make forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and then you can do something part time too, and make another, you know, fifty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars on a, a side hustle or whatever. It doesn't have to be being a realtor. It can be being a realtor, obviously, you know. But obviously, in New, at least in New Jersey. It's tough, right? If you're trying to raise a family and everything on that kind of money, you don't get big raises. Inflation is expensive. The cost of living has been rising pretty dramatically. So, you know, don't wait. I always tell people, don't wait to be in a crisis to do something about it because the cost of living is crazy. Gas is 40% of that and it keeps going up. 
Like that's, I feel like a lot of teachers are underpaid. It's kind of a thankless position. And then you have all the bureaucracy and stuff. And it's like, it just pushes you to be like, if, if you got paid for it, you'd be like, screw it. I'll stay here. Yeah. Right. If yeah. you, if you made six figures, you might be like, yeah, you know, whatever. I'll, 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 you know, I'll deal with it. But because you're not getting paid that much, like some people have jobs that are 40, 50,000, but they love their job. They're like, this shit's easy. And like, I could do it with my eyes closed and it's not a big deal. Like they're happy. But if you're dealing with a bunch of stuff and you're not getting paid, that's when I think you start opening your eyes going, wait, wait, I need to have a plan. Yep. Right. And Even if it, it is doing it part time like you. Absolutely. And then I don't think people realize how much like you can make doing real estate and how many opportunities the doors will open in doing real estate. Um, another teacher I work with, she kind of, we were discussing salary and she told me how much she's made. Now she's close to retirement age. And the difference that she makes from what I make only being um, in, the, in the teaching industry for five, you know, five years is not a lot. And I did the difference and I said I could sell one house, maybe two, and literally cover that spread. Um, so that also made me realize like wow. all, all these years. Wait, how many years has she been teaching? I believe she's close to 30 years now. Yeah, and, and she has her master's degree. And you sell one house and you're up I to her sell, income. I sell one or two houses and I'm up to her income. And that made me realize, like, like all this time kind of wasted to do what I could do in 45 days, you know? Yeah. Right. So and, and, you know, I, I think being a teacher, there's, I tip my hat to people that are teachers because we need them. Yes, we do. Right? And it's we so valuable. And, I important. mean, they spend more time with the kids than the parents do sometimes. Yeah. Right? You pick up your kids and then... You, you know, you hang out with them for a few hours, you eat dinner, and then you put them to bed, like the teacher's with them for eight hours, yeah, exactly. right? So it, it, it's such a valuable resource, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I wish it was, I wish it was a little different. That's all I can ever think about, you know? That's why we wanna help teachers out, and we're not even gonna charge them $99 to be in, in our real estate school. It's gonna be free. So if they reach out to you, and we've done it with Melissa as well, we have a promo code, so, we will not charge you at all. You just have to pay for your book, 60 bucks or so. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And you get your real estate license. And that's our way of giving back to teachers and thanking them for, you know, all their hard work. And, and hopefully this is a way for them to say, you know what, I can continue to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, when you have more money as a teacher, this is how I've, when I was a bartender and I started doing real estate and I started making money, I felt different. Like I was, I got my real estate license and I was just doing rentals in the beginning because I, I was like, nobody's gonna buy a house from me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm young and I look like I'm 12. And that was an issue I had too. People were like, you look so young all the time. I'm like, and then yeah. it freaked me out. I was like, who's gonna buy a house for me? But here <laughs> so, we are. So I would do rentals and I was like, okay, I'm showing a couple of rentals and I'm making like 900 bucks. Like back then rentals were like 900 bucks, but you would make that one month commission, right? And then I would give money to my broker and I would keep like three days worth of bartending, but it was only like a few hours worth of work. But then when I would go to work and like my boss would like yell at me for being late, I'm like, be careful, like stop talking to me like that. <laughs> That's me now. I, you know I what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like you feel different because you're like, I don't need you, bitch. I 100% agree. Right? <laughs> and it makes you have, you know, they say people treat you like you let them. And that's so true because the minute that you start standing up for yourself, that's when they stop you know, they stop treating you that way. It's when you start standing up for yourself. And it's hard for some people to stand up for themselves when they don't have a backup plan, when they have no money, when they, you know, and I feel like, you know, people are in relationships and stuff like that. They, they probably feel the same way. Like the minute they start making their own money, they're like, watch it, you know, or, or whatever it is. And I think that's, I think that's important. Because if you feel like your back is up against the wall, I don't care if you're a teacher or anybody else, if your back's up against the wall, and you have to succumb to, you know, people yelling at you or treating you a certain way or whatever, and you're sick and tired of it, all you have to do is get a, a side hustle and another career. And then if you want, you can transition out 100%. Yep, yep. I 100% agree. And I, I definitely have a little bit of that feeling like at work. <laughs> if like my principal walks in and I happen to be on my phone texting a client back, like I used to like hide it. Now I'm like, oh, well, like. 
what are you going to do? It's okay. You know, so. Fire me. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> Please you, exactly. do it. Do it. Do it. No, do I mean, it. it's not being a jerk, but it's, it's really, it's, it's not about getting away with stuff. It's more about like, you know, how you're being treated. You know, I think that's, that's valuable. All right. And a last question. What is your goal? What does your life look like in the next five to 10 years? Wow. Yeah, so... Uh, and you're how old are you, 29? 29. Okay, so... She's a youngin. Mm. Yeah, in the next five to ten years, um, doing this full-time. Hopefully not mm-hmm. teaching anymore. Um, but I feel like what I would really like to do is kind of give back to newer agents coming in. Um, when I came into real estate and when I joined Signature, I had all the support in the world. And any answer I... Any question I had, I was able to get an answer in a snap of a finger. And um, I feel like I need to give that back now. Like I built all this knowledge up, but I still have a lot to, to learn. But I feel like I have a base um, where I can help newer agents coming in. So um, I feel seek like, to serve mentality. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's what Signature is all about, which is why I love being at Signature. But um, kind of giving back would be where I see myself in the next five to ten, ten years. This maybe. is like one big commercial for Signature. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> She's wearing the shirt too. <laughs> we don't even wear the shirts. No, I wear the shirt sometimes. Yeah, it's comfy, and yeah. it's, I don't got to think about what I'm going to wear every morning. <laughs> I just exactly. Pick up like a black signature shirt, I love and I'm it. on the road. I'm proud of you, Anna. I mean, oh, thank you, John. it's not I'm easy. It's thank not you, easy Michelle. to have a full time job and then be as successful as you've gotten. And obviously, there's ups and downs in real estate. There is right? And it's not easy. And, you know, one month you think you have four deals closing and then none of them close. And then the next, the next, uh, couple weeks you're following up and all of a sudden you land a big listing and you know, it all pays off. So kudos to you for just having that mentality. And I think for people that are out there, I, you know, I like the idea of having a job that doesn't completely absorb you, right? in the beginning to pay your bills and to have that steady income and have health benefits and stuff. And then doing this on the side, because I think it gives you the ability to invest a little bit of money in Mm -hmm. your marketing, right? Like you said, some agents are like, I have $0 to do anything. Okay. Well now you have to hustle and that's it. Like you need to door knock, you need to cold call. Sweat equity in there. Yeah. But, um, I, I think you're a great example for people. And I think it's super important, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now with inflation and the cost of everything going up, yep. like people's wages are not going up with the cost of living. It was on, yeah. new, on the news this morning. I was listening to CNBC and they were talking about what's to come and it's, yeah. it's, it's not good. Yeah. So. And you have AI coming that's going to replace a bunch of jobs. I mean, yeah. heck, you know, uh, Tesla just launched their full self-driving yes. stuff and it's supervised, but eventually that's not going to be supervised anymore. So if you're an Uber driver, you're a Lyft driver, you're a it's taxi gone. cab driver, that's not going to be around for too much longer, it's right? Gone. You need to start thinking about other things. So if you are a teacher, okay, if you're a teacher, we are um, giving back to teachers, reach out to Anna, we'll give her the promo code and then you could um, you could get the real estate school for free. Yes, and awesome. if you're a, a buyer, or seller, or real estate agent and you wanna uh, learn from Anna or have any questions, uh, yeah. how do they reach you? So they can follow me on Instagram, uh, Anna C. Realtor. Uh, they can visit my website, annaquitano.viewnewjersey.com. Um, and those are my two major sources that uh, people could go ahead and follow me at. Awesome, well thank you for having us. Or thank you for having for me. For being on here. <laughs> um, I said the same thing you said on the last podcast. <laughs> We're happy to have you on here. And um, if you guys are watching, check out our other episodes at the Signature Sip um, podcast. And uh, you can follow us on YouTube or Spotify.